Hello, I'm Mark Brasnell from the Rockwell Control and Products Group. Um, the short presentation I'm going to run through is relating to UL approved product for the use in a control panel with some specific um, product um, notice on what should be used where in the particular applications. So here we have a panel built to UL standards. Um, it comprises of three sections. The top section has a, an incomer uh, circuit breaker with the red extension handle you can see, and that's connected to a three-phase buzz bar system with various motor protection and feeder circuits attached to it. The center section is um, similar design, but this time all the products are DIN rail mounted, uh, and this time the red extension handle, you can see pretty much in the middle, is connected to a fuse switch, and the bottom section is ancillary uh, and supply products, um, small, um, PLC, uh, transformer and some uh, power supplies feeding ancillary equipment like a, a socket on the right hand side and the power supplies are to NEC class 2 which means that everything downstream is, a, is a, in total is a less than a thousand VA rating. If we look at some of the specific product the main panel isolation options are the use of a door interlocked um, circuit breaker, molded case circuit breaker, uh, a mini range in the, the U, 140U range up to 32 amps. There are also options for a door interlocked fuse switches, which is quite common for the North American market. Um, but also we do see the odd application where you would simply need an isolator or, or the call for an isolator, but then downstream of it, you would need a circuit breaker or fuse switch to give the panel protection. Door interlocking um, compliance is, um, is quite critical here. Um, in the IEC market, it is quite common to be able to open the panel door uh, for the right uh, compliant person and to turn the isolator or breaker on and off by various means with, with or without a tool. Um, but to com be compliant for the North American UR standards, it must be an NFPA 79 um, door interlock kit where you have to actually turn this thing on with a deliberate action where only the right compliant person should be able to do and it must not be possible to do this um, with the use of any tools other than the handle. So what we have Rockwell have got is a NFPA 79 compliant door interlock kit. As you can see it's a extension handle with a red type floret on the end and it has to have a, a deliberate action of pulling the mechanism towards you with the panel door open, turn the breaker or fuse switch on and also back off again. If we now look at some specific product for various circuits, uh, particularly motor and feeder protection, um, it, it comes in various formats of a what we call a two component starter, which is an MPCB known in the uh, American market as a motor protection circuit breaker with a contactor as a two component starter direct online. A three component starter would comprise of a MCP, motor circuit protector, which has got magnetic only protection. Then you'd have a contactor and another device like an overload, variable speed drive or soft start, which would give the thermal motor protection. To put this into some product um, number context, uh, these would comprise of the 140M C2N range, which is a mag only breaker. The C2E range is a motor protection breaker to both of the 45 amp frame. We then have a larger frame of a motor protection breaker, the J range to 150 amps, and then your molded case circuit breakers, which are short circuit only, to be used as a feeder out to maybe another control panel or to other ancillary equipment on an installation, are the D and the 140G range. And as you can see, these can go to 3000 amps in frame size. Some starter mounting options, which are related to in the main panel picture shown, are these can be DIN rail or buzz bar mounted. The big center photograph shows um, a load of starter combinations, two component, three component, a variable speed drive or soft start on a 60 mil buzz bar spacing. And then the, the ones on the left and the right side are the actual starter components themselves for buzz bar, which are the bits that hook onto the buzz bar or the DIN rail adapters. Important thing here with um, selection for a, a UL North American compliant panel is for the buzz bar, is that the correct segregation, insulation and separator pieces needs to be selected um, on the component part and our MCS star software, once you 
connect the click the UL specification point means that the right bits are selected to make sure it's compliant. Here's a picture of a particular uh, circuit breaker product. As you will see on the top of the breaker, there's that gray plastic attachment, which is the segregator for the three cables uh, to come into the top of the breaker and isolation as well for finger protection. And that is a UL508 compliant piece, which must be added to all parts um, to going into a control panel. The bottom bit is a DIN rail mounted option where you have a feeder part on the second breaker in coming into the top. And that feeds the supply onto a number of breakers, either left or right hand side of that control uh, supply module. Um, miniature circuit breakers um, inside the panel can be the 489 version for branch protectors. You'll see again there that the breaker is, is slightly taller in design than a standard circuit breaker for the uh, European market, as it has the extended fins at the top, again for the cable uh, guidance, if you like, and separation and segregation. And these can be used as the uh, overcurrent protector device on the load branch. Then the supplementary 1077 below, uh, as the word means, supplementary has to be in addition to another breaker. So it could typically be on the output of a power supply um, or ancillary piece of equipment downstream of a, of a main branch protector. Not uncommon in um, North American standards and some specifications we see is still for the use of fuses. Um, small um, mini type fuses that we, we call them uh, up to maybe 30 amps with a class J or CC fuse as a small fuse holder. But of course, you can have a main fuse holder itself for a, a fuse switch up to sort of 600 typical 1250 amps minimum. Again, these can be used in branch circuit protection uh, if the specification requires for it. Uh, put together this, this product uh, portfolio really of the, the type of product with a picture of it. Um, and also, more importantly, it's UL file number and the UL standard is compliant to. Um, the file number is quite important because that's used sometimes in customer technical data files. It, the, it kind of proves that the product selected is, is suitable for the right application. You can find that some uh, product are what we call UL listed, um, um, which recognize, sorry, which means that they have to be used in conjunction with a, UK, a UL listed product to make it compliant. Some information from Rockwell that we do, we have the North American Standards website, uh, which gives you links to various standards uh, and design uh, information. Um, we're in the early part of doing a series of UK uh, webinars on UL and uh, North American Standards webinars. Um, the first one's been done. The link there shows the, the, the link to the registration page for the next one. However, if the first or any of the subsequent ones are missed, there is um, an online um, page there where you can go and review the uh, various presentations at your leisure. And some contacts here in the UK, uh, myself, Simon Lloyds, who is the, uh, an OEM account manager for Rockwell, and Mick Langdell, who is the team leader for the control and power products. And that concludes the presentation. Thank you for your attention.